My name is Chris Arnold, Assistant Professor of Illustration, and I'm one of your co-hosts this evening. I want to start off by saying thank you to everyone who's able to join us tonight. And I additionally want to say thank you to any veterans we have out there on Veterans Day for your service. Um, I'm going to keep this short and sweet. I, I always like getting these things right to the main event. Um, Jackie is an award-winning illustrator. Uh, she's a wonderful artist, uh, wonderful contributor to the craft and the field and the industry. Uh, tonight's uh, format is going to be uh, an interview slash uh, conversation between Ivan Bernetti and Jackie. Um, at any point in time, you all can ask questions in the YouTube live chat, and we'll be sharing those with both the interviewer and the interviewee throughout the evening. Um, I just want to share one quick thing, just a, a, a little anecdote about my experience with Jackie. So Jackie, about 10 years ago, was one of my students. And she was a great student. We, uh, we shared uh, a couple classes together. And I think the mark, one of the things I consider a mark of, of uh, doing a good job as a faculty member is, is seeing their student go further than them. And Jackie has certainly done some incredible things in the industry, done wonderful work as an illustrator, is very socially conscious in her work. And, and it just makes me so proud to see her contributions. And I can humbly say that she has far surpassed things that I've done in the field. And it makes me very proud to have been her teacher. And so I'm gonna go ahead and throw it to my colleague, illustration faculty member, Ivan Bernetti, and let him begin this process of having a great conversation with Jackie. So thank you very much. I look forward to hearing what they have to say. Thank you, Chris. Um for that introduction. And also thanks to the design department for hosting this lecture series. And of course, thank you to everyone who came uh, to see us tonight and uh, especially to, to Jackie for uh, being here. So um, I'll do my best with this to keep it natural because I hate formal interviews. But um, I always like to start a conversation with, because uh, I'm fascinated by everybody's childhood. Um, can you tell us a little bit like when your love of drawing began and and what were the inspirations that got you started with, with drawing? Hmm. Uh, well, hi, everybody. Uh, and thanks so much uh, to you both for inviting me. I'm super happy to be here and talking to everybody out there. Um, so I grew up in uh, Chicago suburbs. And um, I think, I, I mean, I liked drawing as long as I can remember, honestly. I feel like I did a lot of um, copying D Disney characters. Um, you know, that kind of a thing and just um, drawing a little bit outside. But I think, um, I guess when I got a little bit older, I'd copy a lot of things from magazines, a lot of people. I loved, I always loved drawing people. Um, so I feel like uh, maybe around junior high though, I kind of knew that I loved it, but I, I kind of, I can remember a moment when I kind of convinced myself that it wasn't a career like it wasn't like a real thing it wasn't uh, a possibility you know to consider for the future so I kind of stopped um drawing or well maybe I kept drawing but I wasn't really considering it as a as a you know lifelong thing um until a high school teacher like my second semester almost graduating uh, I had to take like an intro to art class and he was like you should really consider you know pursuing this um and so then I I did consider pursuing it from from there on out, but I mean, I've always loved to draw. Um, but it took a while to to feel like it could be um, like a real sustainable, mm -hmm. you know, thing for me. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so uh, Chris mentioned that uh, uh, you were a student, and um, uh, I guess as I, I move from that question, it's kind of like a, maybe. Uh, so I'm assuming there was. Uh, I don't know if you studied illustration specifically or painting or um you know what, what what did you study when you realized like this is what you wanted to pursue well i so i in my undergrad i did education uh oh. so i'm a certified high school teacher um so i taught uh high school art and photography for one year um and then i graduated in 2008 when it was you know the time before this when it was like a bit of a financial okay life crisis for a lot of people. So I got laid off from my teaching job after my first year um, and was kind of forced to, um, well, I wasn't really forced. There was just not any jobs. So I was like, hey, listen, if I can't do that, I might as well try to pursue um, something I, I kind of didn't really trust myself to make it a, a real job before that point. 
Um, but then after one of what was considered the most stable jobs ever, right, teaching kind of wasn't an option, I was like, all right, I might as well just do what I love. So from there on out, I started um, taking classes. I went to Parsons for a summer and just did like a, an intensive um, illustration course and kind of got an intro to all of the different markets and just to what it really was. I had absolutely no idea, um, had no idea what illustration was. And I just had a friend that honestly forwarded me a, a link to a website um, and was like, hey, listen, I think you'd be, you know, your style of art kind of really fits into this genre. You like, you might consider it. Um, Cause up until that point, I didn't really uh, feel like I found myself in, in terms of like where I fit into the art world. Um, I didn't really see a, myself as like a gallery artist. Um, I wasn't interested in advertising. Um, and, and to me up until that point, that was like the only two options. Um, so until I kind of realized that there was this third way to be able to make a living, make art. And um, you know, once I found that I was like, I kind of felt like this is it, this is where I totally belong. Um, so I kept taking continuing education classes um, and then just started trying to get little jobs here and there, you know, saying yes to everything basically. So I, I don't have a formal education in it, honestly. Um, but there's, you know, I, I feel like I had a really good basis and um, then just kept teaching myself. That's, that's great. I don't have a formal education in it either. I, I love hearing uh, stories of people that came to it at like a, in a winding kind of path and then seeing the illustration is kind of like in between that fine art world and then the commercial world of illustration and the, it's sort of like that middle path. Um, so, uh, and you mentioned that you just started doing some uh, illustration work. Uh, that was my next question is sort of, do you remember kind of your early entry points into doing illustration or seeing your work published or just, you know, exhibited? And uh, I, I don't know if you wanted oh, to yeah. uh, also share your screen at any point, feel free. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I have some of my early work from some of the classes I took because I, I think it's interesting, you know, as, as a lot of people who are probably watching are maybe have been lifelong, you know, artists and have loved to draw forever. Your style is always changing, right? And that's, um, I, I love doing these things and looking back at my early work because I could see how much it changes and and even just pointing out things that I'm like, oh my gosh, I love that. I want to bring that back into my work, you know, going forward. It's never a, a straight path, right? Like if we stopped, if we were totally happy with our style, um, like where would we go from there? You know, it wouldn't be so interesting to kind of keep exploring things. So can you see my screen? Uh, I can, I think we're good. If I can see it, I think everyone can see it. Okay. So. So that's my studio. So some early work, um, it, the class in Parsons, um, you know, this is some examples of stuff. I was using colored pencils. I was kind of just experimenting with different things. Um, the one on the top right is watercolor, but kind of digitally collaged. Um, I had a real interest in collage, like right off the bat. Um, this is some work actually from one of Chris's classes, um, kind of understanding what editorial illustration was posters, you know, we visited everything. So at that point, I, I was really loving doing um, drawing, uh, scanning it in, uh, digitally collaging it in Photoshop. Um, I just loved the aesthetic, aesthetic of that. And I just love the process. It just felt like a very fun and like experimental kind of, uh, like you have no idea going into it, what's gonna, what it's gonna end up looking like, right? I thought that was a lot of fun. Um, and then as I said, I kind of just, you know, words, word starts to get around to people that you're pursuing this and then you start getting a bunch of people asking you for free work and you say yes to some of them, you say no to some of them. And, you know, if there's a reason it's going to uh, move you forward with your portfolio, uh, probably say yes, but maybe do some bartering. Um, so I did a book on from this uh, written by this lady who's it wasn't a great book, but um, it was a bunch of dog portraits and then they're kind of traveling around the world discovering where they're from. Um, so I was really able to just kind of use it as, a, as an experiment. And um, I thought, you know, from the, from the get go, I kind of knew myself and I knew one of the reasons why I wasn't, a, I wasn't gonna be a successful like quote unquote artist um, was because I definitely need deadlines. I need someone to hold me accountable for a thing or I need to have someone, you know, that, um, that I'm kind of working for it. That's on the other end of the 
the line waiting for my stuff. Um, so I really liked the um, just collaborating with people in that regard because it gave me the ability to do that. But then it also I started to realize um, like narratively, you know, art can be, or illustration can be really graphic and can be really designy. It can be really beautiful when you look at it, but when you start trying to get, you know, interest in a book world or whatever, there's, to there's totally different things that um, editors are looking for. And we can go into that later, but I loved collaborating with authors and, and working on their projects because it gave me that kind of a direction with, with stuff. So this was a book that I did with a couple writers from Chicago and I just was looking for things at this point on Craigslist, like under gigs, you know, like who could, um, who could I kind of team up with? Um, and so I knew at that point that, you know, doing a collaboration with an author is generally what people tell you not to do just because it's really hard to get it published. But um, I was just focused on building out my portfolio at that point and getting work that was going to kind of speak to, um, to, uh, book illustration um, and other and other markets. I was kind of doing everything, but. Um, Could I ask, uh, were these uh, yeah. books like children's books, these projects where you said you did a book with uh, where you collaborated? Yeah, this was a children's book um, that never came to be for, I will spare you guys on the saga of that, but it was a lot of years, you know, invested in this project um, that never happened. But I came away with some art that I really liked and it, and it kind of took me to another, um, place. Uh oh, okay. Um, oh, wait. So then I kind of kept doing that for a long time and doing other jobs and stuff. Um, but I eventually quit my full-time job and realized I just needed to work on my portfolio if I was going to get anywhere. Um, so this slide, while rather disorganized, um, I decided I needed to focus on characters a lot because in this project, um, the girl looked different on every single page, you know, her face looked different on every single page. So from the projects I had done, I realized the thing that I really needed to focus on if I was going to do, um, focus on people in general, uh, was decide what my style of people, uh, was really going to be. So I just did a ton of artwork at this point, um, in totally different styles and looking at illustrators that I loved, um, doing a lot of sketching, uh, copying a lot of illustrators that I loved, um, picking, you know, this from this detail from that person, this chin from that artist, this nose from that artist, and eventually kind of working it all together uh, to kind of uh, become the characters that I, I felt like were mine. Um, so from that time, I, I, this was from another project that I kind of collaborated on with someone um, that never came to be. It was just her book idea and it kind of gave me a, a place to start from. Uh, so this little character, Johnny. Um, so I made this piece and a couple others from that story. Um, and at this point, I felt like I had enough good examples in my portfolio that were consistent um, and went out to look for a agent at that point. Um, so that's kind of all of like my, you know, beginning until um, kind of ending on focusing on children's books uh, for the time being, and then also being happy with where the direction my style was going um, in that particular market. Okay, yeah, so, uh, so it seems like collaboration was a big part of that discovery process um, for you, and uh, I thought there was a great point too about needing uh, deadlines and and things like that, um, which uh, I find is true for me as well. Like I, I can't do it unless somebody else needs it. Um, but so uh, I think uh, yeah. you know a lot of our students, um, you know, we try to stress the importance of that kind of learning to work as a team sometimes and collaborating. Uh, I love what you said because it it shows like you actually uh, grew a lot in that process, and uh, it seems like you still love it because your children's books are collaboration still they're all uh written by uh, children's book authors i was curious if you were interested yeah. in writing one of your own at some point or if, if that's not something you were yeah absolutely for sure that's like a you know next leading step for question me. but um, that's... <laughs> yeah no i for sure um but man it's hard it's it's really hard 
uh, I, I feel like at this point, having focused on the illustrations for so long, I'm now like, you know, juggling those two. There's so many ideas that I, I feel like I put into the images. Um, it has, it's so nice to start with like half of it already done, you know, the story there, um, the idea there, sometimes the characters there, not necessarily though. And then to just take that and, and run with it, um, you know, kind of what, what stopped me before just from making artwork kind of before I found illustration was that I got overwhelmed with like options, you know, um, and I didn't know what to make. I didn't know what to say as a, as an artist. I didn't know what I was trying to like share with the world. Um, so another reason I just love illustration is because it gives you that starting point and, and there's so much you can add to a project, even though, you know, maybe you haven't written the book or you haven't written the article or you haven't, you know, uh, whatever. Um, there's still so much about your, you know, interests, your character, your personality that you bring and your experience that you bring to a project um, that it kind of helped me focus, you know, on just that. So now expanding and trying to do both has been uh, certainly a challenge, but that's, it's definitely, um, uh, you know, well, I, it's definitely going to happen. 2020, yeah. 2021 no, is my year. <laughs> I, I was curious, um, you know, just going through the process of working with others might be also a great introduction to how the whole process works, if you're not sure, right? So having collaborated with the authors is going to certainly help when you do the whole thing yourself, because you understand the process a lot more, I assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. Um, yeah, I can skip ahead to... Uh, well, whatever uh, you, uh, if you feel free to show anything you, that you, you would like to show. Well, in terms of process, you know, working with, um, you know, uh, uh, authors, um, when you work with a traditional publisher, you never talk to the author ahead of time. You have no communication with them. So I like to show this. This is the first three pages of the first book that I did. Mm -hmm. um, so this is literally all that comes to your email is like the manuscript, you know, and I think this book was under 500 words. Um, so what I think as an illustrator is that's, that's so easy if I read it. Uh, Vini, come, the field calls, roll, ball, solier, shoes, goal, goal, shoot, ooh, 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 you, 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 friends versus friends, anu, ale, let's go. They, you know, the author has not written in any characters. We have no idea what the people look like. We don't even know who's saying what. We don't know where we are other than maybe some context clues, right? There's another language. Um, it's probably not the U.S. We, you know, maybe, but we don't really know. Uh, shoe, you know, they're, they're shooing something. We don't really know what, but there's so much freedom that comes with uh, doing a book. I feel like they give you uh, an incredible amount of opportunity to bring your own experience and your own like vision to the, to the, to the world. Um, but in terms of, of uh, I just, I think it's fascinating. You know, most people think that it is a collaboration between an author and, a, and an illustrator. And unless maybe you're doing a self-publishing uh, journey, then most likely you're not, you're not ever going to talk with them until the book is published. Um, but my yeah. contact is normally with the art director or the editor on the book. Um, so for I example, quick question. yeah, I was going to yeah, ask yeah. at this point, at this point, did you know the book was going to be called the field and you knew the general subject matter or? Uh, I did. Curious. So the, yeah, so the, they gave the, me the title. Point. And, um, and there was like a, a little paragraph from the author, right? Saying he's from St. Lucia. Um, and actually maybe there wasn't even a paragraph. It was just like, the, you know, the author's fr from St. Lucia. Um, and, you know, the, the other language is St. Lucian Creole. Um, and there was one art note in the entire book, which was uh, next to the word shoe, which was, um, uh, a kid needs to be like shooing cows off of a field. Um, mm -hmm. So that was the singular art, art note and direction that I got for the whole project. So um, at that point, uh, you know, I, I kind of could relate to the story on a lot of different levels, but, um, but so I'll show you the, the illustrations for it. So I ended up with this little character kind of being the main character. Um, but I thought a lot about the characters since there was none written into the book. Um, I had to think a lot about who was going to be like, you know, this person that we follow. And then kind of halfway through the process of coming up with all of the sketches and everything, I realized like the main character is 
not necessarily a person, like in this case, it is the field itself is the main character of the book. And it is this place where people come together. Um, it's about community, it's about playing, it's just about having fun and overcoming a few problems. But, um, you know, in terms of coming up with my visual narrative for it, that was the decision and the realization that really kind of um, was at the forefront of my mind when making all of the decisions throughout the course of the book. Um, so while we do follow two characters from the first page to the last page, um, I made really conscious effort to make sure that they weren't the, the, the center of, of every spread. They weren't the main, the main you know, takeaway from the book. Um, so yeah, that's the field. And certainly with, with every project, it's different, right? Your focus is gonna be a little bit different because every story is different. But um, you know, the, the collaboration or, or the, the back and forth with the editors, I've, I've had a really great experience with every book that I've worked on. Some certainly present more challenges than others. Um, but I think if you have a reason for everything you're doing, um, if you have a reason for every decision that you're making, uh, you can get your way most times. Yeah, I, I think a, a lot of our students would be fascinated um, how you got this uh, opportunity. Did you, uh, did you show the other children's books that didn't come to be as samples of your work or, um, if you maybe talk yeah. a little bit about how the opportunity came along and, um, um, you know, uh, this, this book has won awards. Uh, so just like, I think a lot of our students just want to know, like, how, how do we get there? Yeah, like, yeah. How, yeah. How do you get started in this field? For uh, sure. The illustration field, not the soccer field. Yeah. Yeah. The soccer field. Um, can't help with that too much, but, <laughs> um, you know, I, I feel like, I wanted to do it all in terms of working in every different market. I wanted to do fashion. I wanted to do architecture and I wanted to do editorial. And I wanted to do books. Um, but at one point I just decided I needed to pick a focus and go for it like a hundred percent. And simultaneously I did pick up little projects here and there, other projects um, that were in totally different markets that I can, I can share. But I think that my focus uh, or, or my decision to focus on books was what ultimately, um, I think it just came through with the work in my portfolio. So basically I kind of, as I kind of briefly mentioned, um, I quit my like full-time job in 2015 and I just gave myself six months to work on my portfolio. I went to a conference um, in New York that's through the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators. Um, and right before that, I won a uh, mentorship through We Need Diverse Books, which um, conveniently started, was like a, basically just started as a Twitter hashtag, but um, it was really a movement in terms of making people aware that the lack of diversity in children's books is just way too big um, and does not like adequately reflect the actual makeup of our country anymore, right? So there was, there's a lot of um, movement and pressure from people to now um, actively get more creators, um, writers, illustrators, and people on the you know inside, so editors, art directors, etc., um, that are coming from different backgrounds, so that they can you know be telling stories in in new and different ways. Mm -hmm. um, where was I going with this? Oh, well, how I got started. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, so but that's I a got, big facet too that I wanted to talk yeah. about because that's a big part of your work, the increasing diversity of books and, and illustration in general. So we can come back to that too. Yeah, we can come back to that. I mean, it's a, like I didn't get into illustration for that reason, right? I didn't get into it necessarily to be an advocate for like diversity in, in children's books. I got into it because I love to draw and this is like what I found my passion was, but um very quickly I realized that this was something that, well, one, you kind of have to realize what, where your opportunities are. Um, and I quickly realized, to be perfectly honest, that it was a big opportunity because it had just been this campaign that started. So people were actively looking, agents were looking for, to, to represent people that weren't, you know, that were all different backgrounds. Um, people were looking for, um, you know, illustrators, it's still such a small percentage of illustrators. Like, I feel like it's, it's more, there's more diversity in writers, but there's still like so much opportunity for 
um, illustrators of different backgrounds because this just um, like when I started my agent who, who represents a lot of like Latinx uh, authors and illustrators was like, listen, like the same people just keep getting the awards like every year, you know, in terms of awards for mm -hmm. that are specifically for like Latinx creators. And um, she's like, there's just such a big need for it. So um, not to say that there's not room for absolutely everybody in this industry. There is because I feel like there's, you know, it's from my perspective, there's a lot of work out there for everybody. Um, but uh, it, it did really help me get a foot in the door having um, a mentor that first year who introduced me to my now agent. Um, I had one before that for a year, but she was just, she was a sweet person, but she just wasn't very good at her job. <laughs> so we part ways. Um, but uh, once I signed with the agency that I'm with now, um, honestly, it, it happened really quickly because she's just uh, awesome and uh, knows a lot of people and spread the word about, you know, her new illustrator on board. And I got two um, offers for books, like, very quickly. Um, so those are my first two books that, that came out, obviously. Um, yeah. I, and, yeah. No, no, I was no. going to say, uh, I don't know if you... Uh, and you could keep going with that. Uh, one thing that I thought was really interesting with um, the, the next book, um, Freedom Soup, was the, uh, the level of research and immersion in the subject that you took on to really like understand what, what you were drawing, who you were drawing, and also that you took some of your own personal experience and were able to apply it into the story as well. I don't know if you wanted to talk a little bit about the process of creating this book. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, so this book is about um, a uh, this little girl, Belle, and her grandmother, who's called Tigran, and they're making uh, this soup that's called Soup Jumu. It's New Year's Day, and New Year's Day is Haitian Independence Day. So this is the first year that Belle gets to make the soup. Um, and throughout the book, we're kind of uh, learning about um, the significance of this. Um, it is symbolic of the Haitian Revolution, which was the like first and only successful slave rebellion to lead to like the formation of a, of a new country, Haiti. Um, and it was a, a big inspiration for the slaves here in the United States to you know continue to fight for their freedom. So it, um, you know, I knew nothing about this going into it, but th there was certainly things that I could relate to it. And I think as an illustrator, you have to find something like a way in for yourself, um, a way you're gonna connect with the story, even though I'm not Haitian, there was so many levels of this story that I, I felt like I could personally connect with. And you kind of have to find those and then intertwine them and you know make the illustrations um, yours in that regard. So I guess in terms of that, the, the thing that I latched onto was, you know, Belle is this character from the United States, never having been to a place that really means a lot to her grandmother and to her culture and to her background. Um, so in terms of illustration, I kind of, I thought a lot about growing up and while I had been to where my dad came from, which is Honduras, um, a lot of the things around our house, a lot of the, you know, paintings and, uh, towels and, uh, statues and everything really told me the story of where he came from in addition to his own. So I started visually by filling this house with all sorts of details from Haiti. Um, and that kind of gave me a, a lead into the big part of this project that that I felt like was um, was hard was um, jumping back into the past um, and how to do that visually how I wanted to do that visually um, so this illustration is is in the middle of the book we have about five spreads that kind of go back and show the story of the Haitian Revolution so um, you know during my research I went and made this soup with a friend of a, uh, a friend of my cousin in New York and we spent the whole day together making the soup. It was it was wonderful. But then I just you know casually at the end of it took pictures of everything in her house. Um, and afterwards, when I was thinking about the the story, I I started thinking about Haitian artwork and how that would be such a great way in to um, kind of sneaking into the past visually. So you could kind of see the wavy trees um, here in this painting that was in this in this woman's house. And I was just sketching and kind of just, I was sketching all of the images from my research. And then I just thought how beautifully it works with them dancing together. And then, you know, things connect in your brain when you're drawing. So it just, to me, fit together that they could, you know, be having this 
kind of beautiful dance together in the kitchen um, and, and help us imagine the step back into the past. Um, but the, you know, research is really critical for me and like, honestly, one of my favorite parts of the whole process, though, I, I probably go like a little above and beyond when it comes, <laughs> it comes to that. Cause I, I love to travel for it. I love to meet people. I went to the like Haitian restaurants here in Chicago and, you know, on new year's, new year's day, um, and, and had the soup and, um, you know, kind of do as much as I possibly can to get into this world because, you know, it's while it's part nonfiction um, and you have to be accurate with a lot of things, it, I guess this one was kind of a hybrid um, in terms of making sure that you're really accurate with certain things, but then also bringing kind of like a fantastical element to it, I suppose. Um, well, one so, thing I, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, I, I, I mean, I'm, I f finish what you were saying. I just have random <laughs> no, I, questions. I, Oh, well, one thing I noticed in both books that, you, that was so wonderful was that um, you got so much movement on the, you know, the static page of a book, but uh, even when you're um, making illustrations of cooking, right, it sort of was like, yeah. you know, they're as active as the illustrations of uh, kids playing soccer. There's just so much, um, like the dance element is really important, but uh, everything feels like it's constantly in movement and it just keeps the story really flowing. If you, if you said to somebody, I'm doing a book about somebody making soup, right? That could, uh, you could see it, you treat it very, <laughs> yeah. in a very static way, but you found a way to like make the whole process come alive. And, and it also sounds like for yourself, even researching was kind of like that, that kind of immersive process of like really trying to understand what, what you're drawing and bringing, bringing your own experience to it as well. It's yeah, just, absolutely. Uh, and I mean, to be fair, they are in the text, they are dancing in this also. So that was an element of it that I just loved off the bat, because you're totally right. Like a book about cooking is not necessarily a book I'm going to want to do because it sounds boring to me. Like I didn't love drawing the food. I think I drew food on this one spread. It's a book about <laughs> cooking. And I just, you know, I, I tended to draw people dancing more <laughs> because, uh, it's just more fun to me. Um, but, uh, you know, honestly, we only need to see the ingredients once. Like, it's more about their relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and the, you know, the funny thing with this, with this book was I was actually up, my, my agent was trying to get me a different job um, at the same time, but they told me, you know, we just really don't see, a, you know, a love between characters in her, in her work. Like, we don't see love between, it was a book about a, a mother and a daughter. And they're like, we just don't see this like connection. And um, they asked me to do examples of, of quote unquote, the love between a mother and a daughter. And I was like, oh my God, what does that mean? That can mean so many different things. And my examples were terrible. The, 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 the work that I made, for, you know, to pitch myself for that book was just awful. And um, I realized at that point too, after finishing Freedom Soup, I was like, I created a whole book about the love between a, a mother and a grandmother, you know, but, but mm -hmm. me for like artistically, I feel like I realized I need those layers of story. I need, um, you know, a, a, bigger, a bigger reason behind it, I guess, to be able to create, create the artwork. Um, so that was the good lesson that I took away from from that it wasn't that I can't do illustrations about the love between a mother and a daughter it's just that that's just too broad you know it's just like you have to to make it something that you can emotionally connect with you have to kind of start from a, a deeper place um and 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 more specific you know like the the there's universal and specific um things so universality and specific things however the phrase goes um yeah, but, yeah but it's true it's true uh, it's it's interesting because um, uh, having taught uh, editorial illustration for a long time, I think one of the challenges for students is, um, you know, when you have these big categories, um, it's it's hard to make that interesting, right? And I think the way to do it is to get away from the abstract and kind of make it more concrete. So, you know, the love between a, a mother and daughter, like that's a really abstract idea. But if you start yeah. thinking about, like, I love the, in that other drawing with the, the grandmother's hand on the, on the child's hand, right? Like just thinking yeah. about actual details or touching food or someone 
um, embracing somebody or, you know, like making it more concrete. So you have something as an illustrator, you have something that you're drawing where the theme comes out of that as opposed to, you right. know, I have to, I have to illustrate this abstract concept. Abstract concepts are the hardest. And I feel like I've struggled with that the most in, in the like kind of editorial projects where, you know, I have some examples of it and like, I feel like I, I eventually got yeah. there, but you know, illustrating the word um, integrity, like, oh my God, are you kidding me? That's so hard. Like, or, um, you know, this was like, I guess I could show, this was yeah, um, some work I'm that I did. Ask like, about your editorial work and how you saw it in relation <laughs> to the children's books. But yeah, this is a, I, I, this is on your uh, portfolio on your site. And I was curious about some, of, like what were the prompts that you were uh, challenged with on these? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, like, I, I'm trying to remember <laughs> now. I think this one was community. Um, this was, oh gosh, I should be able to remember that the each individual individual things, but they were just big concepts like that, you know, of, um, collaboration was one of, um, integrity, community, you know, very difficult things. Yeah. Um, equity. Oh my God. I spent so much time trying to think about really how you can show equity and the, you know, you kind of look at past illustrations what people have done and you can and really think about all of the wrong things that that we can learn from a, from an illustration um <laughs> like yeah and, and, like they say so much you know and so quickly and with big concepts like that it's it's just really hard um so these are some examples from that project so it's it feels like it should be easier right it's one word versus like an entire book no those are the but, words those are the hardest yeah <laughs> but i I'm seeing that you 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 came back to that um, idea like you like to draw people um, and people yeah. doing, doing things and I see uh, yeah. in the images that that's a way to illustrate that um, in a, in a more uh, down to earth way maybe right like where you could bring that concept right. down to earth. Yeah, yeah. I think I I think I do tend to gravitate back towards people just because I love drawing people. I love. Faces that I love, you know, telling the story through that, um, and yeah, it, and it can definitely help uh, with conveying that concept for sure. Were, were there other, other editorial projects you wanted to take us through, if you oh. wanted to say more about the process of? Um, I know sketching is going to uh, probably come up in both uh, areas. So there's in the children's oh, book sure. as well as the. Um, editorial work and, and then I also wanted to ask about uh, you had some projects listed kind of under design on your, oh, on yeah. your website and I was I was curious about how you see all of those uh, different facets of your work how they interrelate or are they different to you are they do you put on a different hat for each one or you see that all is one is all one kind of thing and you take your approach to each to all of them yeah you know, I'll go back to the to the design kind of stuff because that mm -hmm. was um, just a completely left turn, you know, in, in terms of a project that was brought to me. And it was just a friend from a long time ago that was working for this company that needed architectural illustrations in like a week for this, you know, her, her deadline was crazy. She couldn't find anybody to do it. This is right when I quit my job. So I was still kind of working on my characters, you know, at that point. But I was like, hey, I desperately need money. Absolutely, I'll do it. And so the project ranged from really traditional illustrations of, um, you know, so this was a project that like this building was going to be open in maybe like six months. So they didn't have photographs of it, but they were trying to um, use it as marketing, you know, images for their website, social media, et cetera. So it was from like, you know, these kinds of illustrations um, to, uh, that was like half of it. And then, um, but there was probably like 30, you know, of each of these different rooms and all of the different furniture. And it was so fun. Cause it was like, oh my gosh, it finally, I didn't have to think about like my style, the people, like it was, it was a lot of stuff I had been thinking about at that time. And then I was just like drawing straight lines and it was like such a relief. Um, but then the other half was these architectural collages that they wanted. And it was um, like uh, really inspired by their direction for it. Um, was inspired by Mies van der Rohe's collages. Um, so they wanted them to look, you know, 
in the same vein as those. And so this was kind of going back to my love of collage like that I had, you know, early on. Um, and I was finally able to use that. And I was really excited about that. So these were digital collages that I did um, for that. And I think maybe I did like 15 of, of these. And some of them were way, you know, way different and just kind of experimenting. Um, and then there was this company in South Korea that hit me up like a year later and they were um, asking me to do the exact same thing because they had seen that work. Um, and they were opening a, a si very similar coding space. So I got to do a, like a whole second go at these digital collages. Um, and I just loved them. They were so much fun. Um, so, so different than what I was working on simultaneously to like children's stuff. Um, so it wasn't like one came before the other. Um, this was kind of happening at the same time, but, um, but I certainly found, you know, ways to incorporate, you know, I, I feel like I can still kind of see bits and pieces of my style in, in these. Um, so then they were just like all this marketing stuff for this South Korean company, which I was like a little skeptical at first. I was like, this is a scam, but it ended up being legit. So that was fun. Um, so that's some design stuff. And then, you know, that stuff has been kind of living on my website and I haven't done too much of that, but I do have um, a book coming out in 2021 that uh, is architectural illustrations, um, chapter illustrations. And then I did the cover, um, which I can just go ahead and show now. I know. Yeah, um, so this is the cover mm -hmm. for a book that I have coming out in 2021. So this is like the full, right? So like the left side is the back cover and the right side is the front cover. It kind of um, wraps around. And then these are some examples of the interior like chapter illustrations. So it's again, digital collage. This was another challenge like doing a spot color. Had never done that before. It took me a minute to figure out how to get all my files together for that, but it was it was really fun. But again, this um, what, what I loved about this project was that they were really trying to get um, the point across about um, that it's really more about life and the way you live um versus the style of house that you want to live in so i got to bring in a lot of things i had learned in terms of narrative you know um showing relationships people doing what they're what they are you know normally doing on a day-to-day -day. um so i think that they really like loved that i could bring that to the project because um it's not necessarily something that maybe an architectural illustration illustrator would uh normally be be trying to convey i think um, but I'm really happy that, that I'm still able to kind of do this kind of work without it feeling, um, like I have just way too many styles and, and I'm trying to go in way too many directions. Um, I think it's really about organizing your website, honestly, so that people can find what they're looking for very quickly. Um, but, um, yeah, so th those are pretty different things, but I feel like I found ways to kind of weave them together in my mind at least. Yeah, no. Well, like you said, <laughs> it goes back. I don't really think I don't really think that they have to, you know. I think that the, the fun thing is just to continue to learn um what you like to create, you know, and to keep experimenting and to keep doing different things. I certainly um hope that I keep getting random stuff that's a big challenge, you know. Yeah, I, I love that. And you said you, you know, it brought it brought you back to one of the original things you were really interested in, which is that sort of collage process and you know, like, I, I feel like everything we do in our life kind of comes back at some point and it's useful oh, yeah. to, uh, you know, that, uh, I mean, I, yeah, I was Definitely. curious if you thought there was a, if, if doing these influenced the way you illustrated the, um, well, there's two, you have two children's books coming out. So I, I don't know if this project was done yeah. at the same time as doing those illustrations or or just after or just before, but if- This was, I, I did this just after I was finished with those two book uh, projects. Okay. Um, oh, so then yeah. uh, I, I would ask, do you think this will influence the way you do your next children's book, having done this, like this project? Um, In a way, you know, I really loved working with the limited color. Um, I think that that could be a really, a really great thing for the, for the right story. Um, So I'm, I'm happy to have learned that skill in terms of, uh, you know, like the printing process side of it, like the technical side of it. Um, it's really fun to limit yourself, you know, to what you can, what you can do with black, white, and one color. Uh, so that's certainly something I'll be, I'll be carrying with me. Um, and, uh, you know, I loved, I kind of have been wanting to, I've been having an idea for 
uh, I don't know if it's a, cart a comic or a graphic novel or something, um, I've kind of started doing little sketches about it. Um, but I definitely brought that interest into this project because I, uh, I love Chris Ware, the, I'm sure most people, or some, some people might know him, but oh, yeah. um, the cross sections of the, of the apartment buildings mm -hmm. in Chicago. And um, so I totally copied him for this uh, illustration here. And so I was kind of learning a bit about maybe the style and the direction I would want to go to if I, if I continued, or, you know, like once I focus on um, the book idea I have for, mm -hmm. for like more of a comic-y style. So I think I would, I would definitely bring a lot of what I learned this into, into that project. Um, yeah, no, one thing that came up too that I wanted to ask about was, um, uh, so it looks like uh, in some of the books, it's uh, tr traditional materials generally to create the illustrations, but some of what you're showing is seems like there, well, there's definitely been a digital component in the sense of scanning and kind of collaging elements. How do you, are you working mostly with traditional materials and tools or are, are, do you find yourself moving more toward digital? Um, you know, I think it depends on the project for sure. Like I'll show some of my, um, for books, I I probably will always do it at least 75% traditional. Mm -hmm. I to quickly show the process, you know, I always start on with, with pencil and just doing gesture drawings. And then I kind of put my characters into those, um, you know, into those movements. And I just like love working with, with pencil for, for the beginning um, for sketching and stuff. Um, but then, you know, so I like lay out all the pages, but I, I bring everything into Photoshop at that point and I, you know, move things around and, and come up with my sketches that way. Um, you know, experimenting with compositions is so mm -hmm. much easier on, uh, you know, in Procreator and Photoshop or something. Um, but then I'll go back and I'll start everything traditionally in, in terms of picture books. Um, and it's honestly just personal preference. There's, you know, I think that there's so much more, there's so many, important things uh to to focus on when doing a book and I, I don't really think that i shouldn't say this but style is important but there's but there's other things that are also equally as important so it doesn't matter necessarily what materials you want to use it doesn't matter what combinations of things you want to you like to use and put together like you know i, I go back i go i start with traditional meat materials i scan them into photoshop I play with colors, I play with levels, I play with curves, I play with collaging other things in. If I completely mess up the face of a character, you know, like a lot of times I will do a, just a pure background. Um, so this is painted with gouache. Um, and I, I use, I, I've done this for every book, you know, I'll, I'll do like a, just one big landscape paint, but just very bare, obviously. It's just like this field. Um, and I'll use that paint texture in a lot of backgrounds. Um, of my of the other illustrations so um like i might end up just doing i don't know if i have an example of it um i might just create the character in marker on paper just kind of like this and then digitally put in a different background or play with it that way so i go back and forth and back and forth um for the book i have one of the books i have coming out in 2021 was the first time i uh, i'll show you those um it was the first time i use i incorporated procreate into my uh, into my um, process mm -hmm. and it was because I really wanted to do these more graphic banners and it was kind of um, you know obviously looking more like a like tattoo-y uh, style um, for the letters and stuff so I just found that that was the best tool for it um, honestly like I tried it on paper and I tried it on Procreate and it was just it just looked way better so but that said um, you know to kind of still get that style of like the spot art, you know, the, the tattoo spot art. I did these big pastel backgrounds, like with traditional pastels. Um, and then I still did my characters with marker. I love doing characters with, with marker, Prismacolor markers. I just feel like it has a really rich color to it. And the way you can layer the markers just ends up beautiful. Um, and, and then I kind of collage it all together. And then I, you know, went over all of my line work and procreate and just imported that into Photoshop. And, and um, so, you know, this has pastel, marker, pencil, Photoshop, Procreate. Um, I don't think I used any paint for this project, which was fine. It was enough it's, in there uh, already. 
it's the yeah. uh, definition of multimedia, right? I mean, it it's really is everything. Multimedia, yeah. No, you have but just I, everything there. Yeah, exactly. But but I feel like you know every story really calls for its own style in a way, and it might not deviate you from greatly from your own style, but it might call for a new medium. Mm -hmm. You know, adding it in 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 there, it might call for, um, you know, like these banners. I'd never done anything like that. I had never done lettering for a book before, but I was like, hey, this is my chance. I like, and, and by the way, they, they didn't, you know, that was all my concept. Like they just gave me the words for this book. There was no like idea of incorporating tattoos, you know, into it or, you know, of a as a design concept or anything. That's just kind of what I brought. Um, Cause I just felt like it was, it's a, it's a, it's a twist on your mama jokes. And yeah, so I kind yeah. of in my head started with like, a, you're, you know, like I love my mom tattoo um, idea and then just kind of went from there. So I think uh, that's, that's great. Uh, I, I mean, I'm always uh, reminding students that when an illustrator is hired, the illustrator is expected to bring ideas, bring their own ideas to things. Uh, you're not always oh, yeah. told exactly what to do, right? They're looking for you to um, bring ideas to a project. Um, I was yeah. curious. Uh, we also, one thing we stress in our program here is um, the importance of thumbnail drawings and presentation sketches. How you mm -hmm. sell a project to a client is so much based on mastering the quick, the, the sketch that can kind of sell the idea. So I don't know if you wanted to talk a little bit about that aspect, um, how you use sketching in your process. You talked, yeah, a, little about, sure. you talked a little bit about it. I'm, I'm also curious uh, in terms of presenting your work like do you do you, are these sketches you might present at a certain stage in the in pitching a project or developing a project yeah you know um so i will like i probably didn't show either of these thumbnails mm -hmm. to uh, my art director but um i basically start everything like that you know like maybe on a little post-it note just coming up with different compositions or different ideas um and um then you know I, I feel like especially for well no for everything but but for for books I might take the sketch a little bit farther um before I you know show it to somebody because I'm showing the whole thing at, a, at you know at once like 32 pages for editorial stuff I don't have any editorial sketches in here I should have included some but um I'll uh, definitely show them like six concepts um, six different ideas, six different concepts, because like you said, they're, they're not just hiring you for, you know, you being able to, they don't want to be like, we want you to draw a little girl down here, drawing a math problem with another table back here. And then, you know, they want, they really want to hire you for you, um, you for your ideas, you for who you are, what you stand for. And I guess I found, you know, in terms of editorial work I've done, I've, I've continued to be hired by for projects that do have, um, you know, I guess like a bit of a social, you know, um, concept or social mm -hmm. consciousness aspect to it. Um, and that really started from a poster I just did for fun, which was this poster for the Women's March. And um, it just got a lot of attention. Um, I, I did a fundraiser for it. And uh, then a lot of people saw it. And, uh, you know, since then, I feel like in terms of that work, um, in terms of like editorial stuff, basically every project I've gotten has a, a something like that, you know, incorporated into the into the theme. But so, but to deviate from that, um, I'll you know for for editorial stuff, I'll send like six ideas, you know, six little thumbnails that might be as rough as this, um, because usually those projects are, are very fast. The turnaround might be a weekend. Um, so I don't want to spend a ton of time. I want to get my concept out and, you know, sent um, because they know how to read. Uh, the people that you're working with on these projects know how to read what, you know, your illustrations are, are saying. Um, so they're very good at not being like, oh my God, this girl has no idea how to draw. You know, like they know if they're hiring you for it, they know that they're going to get something that's not going to look like this in the oh, end right. but it's the concept at that point that really matters well these are better than my thumbnails that i send <laughs> they um, don't all look like this <laughs> no but, i mean yeah. uh, mine are uh, rougher so uh yeah i think that's something um 
uh, I try to stress all the time too, they're not looking for uh, you as an illustrator, like, okay, here's my idea, I send you one drawing. Uh, you do have to come up with six concepts uh, or sometimes yeah. let's say it's three, but you have to be ready that they might not choose the one you really want to do. I don't know if that's happened. For sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. You have to believe enough in all of the ones that you send that you have to be ready for those to be the one, the one that's chosen. That's the one you're going to have to do. Um, so yeah, uh, it's good to hear. I do this uh, for the Chicago. I did this for the Chicago Reader, and it was about um, like the inequity in um, uh, like weed distributors. You know, mm -hmm. when they when they legalized it. And there was another sketch that I just, I was like, they're going to pick this one. It's so good. They're going to pick it. I know they're going to pick it, but they chose this, this concept, which I liked as well. But, um, but yes, that absolutely happens and you just have to go with it, but you can also make the sketch that you like, like better than all of the other ones. Um, one piece I did just for myself, because um, this was actually part of the architecture project, but I had just done this like quick, um, sketch that was included in my pitch with all of them. And I just like loved this idea of showing this, I can't remember if, who the architect of that chair is, um, but uh, they didn't pick it. And I was like, are you stupid? Like, why are you not picking? This is a great design. So I just did it for myself, you know, and now I use it in my portfolio kind of on its own and, um, and I love it. So it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you can't still make it, you know, if they choose the other one, but, but I think it is, um, and, and it's also like the first idea that you come up with, probably 10 other people are gonna have the same idea. The second idea, probably only five other people are gonna have that idea. The third idea that you have, maybe only two other people are gonna come up with that idea. You know, your, your fourth and your fifth and your sixth idea, probably you're getting to something really original and, and that's really like unique and gonna be better than the rest. So it's worthwhile to like force yourself to, to do, like I, I work with a timer. So when I'm coming up with like thumbnails, I'll do, I'll set my timer to 10 minutes and I'll um, like just force myself to do 10 minute. Um, and maybe usually I kind of stop it earlier than that, but it'll force me to not worry too much about the, um, the drawing and just getting like concepts out. Um, That's uh, music to my ears as a teacher. Because, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm glad that you said all, all that. Um, um, you know, that the, how important that, that, that those steps in the process are. Um, and uh, I know we're, we're getting close to uh, where we're gonna maybe switch to a Q, Q and A and I'm gonna just quickly see if I forgot a major aspect. Um, I don't know if you wanted to talk a little bit more about uh, these uh, efforts of kind of increasing uh, diversity is one aspect, but just kind of a social consciousness or having a maybe a sense of values as an illustrator. I don't know if you wanted to talk a little bit about that. As you're saying, like a lot of the illustration work really is a way for you to put your passion into the into these drawings because you care about what you're trying yeah. to communicate yeah you know one thing that i always think about when either deciding to take a project or not is um something that neil gaiman said it but he's like you know never do something just because of the money um so if there's another and he, and he ends it with like sometimes the money doesn't ever come through uh, which hopefully it does but sometimes you know you're doing a project for like 50 bucks or something and or you're bartering for something or you know it's really just it's for a nonprofit. you know like there's there's reasons why you would do it for n um no money but it doesn't mean that it doesn't have great value but um you know deciding what projects you take on is is a really big deal also because in terms of books they take a freaking long time. So it's a year of your, you know, like, or six months or something of your life that you're devoting yourself to this. Um, so, you know, I've passed, I passed a lot on a lot of books actually, because I just, you know, something that maybe somebody assumed I could relate to because I'm from Chicago or because of this or because of that. And I like just didn't find a connection with it. Um, so I think as an illustrator, you have to have a personal connection with it too. And then also just keep picking projects that do speak to like a greater, you know, your, your maybe like long-term vision of what you want your like breadth of work to look like, like later. Um, I think my agent in particular, my agent in particular is really, really good at helping me see the long, you know, the, the long view of everything. Um, and I probably would have picked up a lot more projects that were, you know, going to take up a lot of time and, and ended ending up very mediocre. 
Um, but by picking and choosing the things that you work on, I think it says a lot about what you care about in the world um, and what you want like the world to be like. So I, I kind of, you know, I naturally am gravitated towards books with, you know, creating characters that maybe look like ethnically ambiguous or, you know, or I mean, clearly Hispanic, clearly um, black, clearly this or that. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's, um, it's, it's not that you have to have, um, it's not that you have to be like political in your views or you have to be socially conscious, but if you are, um, I guess the work that, you know, the stuff that you put in your portfolio is gonna get you the work, um, is, is gonna get the, you the work that you get. So make sure you have stuff there that really speaks to the work that you wanna make. Um, Cause if it's not in there, you're not gonna get that work. Um, so if you hate spaceships and outer space and cats, like don't have that in your portfolio cause that's the stuff you're gonna get. Um, if you do love that and that's your passion then make sure that that's, you know, highlighted in your, in your work. Um, but for me, it, it definitely is a way to kind of um, come back to feeling like, like I was always scared of calling myself an artist for a really long time. I feel like I'm getting closer to being okay with saying that now um, because I feel like I have a direction in terms of um, like what I want to, to say to the world. Um, and, but you know, all these different projects have, have definitely helped me figure that out. So it's a journey. It's certainly a process. That's great. I think we're right at seven. I, I actually set a, a little oh. alarm if you heard that. That was because I'm usually oh, the one that's talking. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but we're right on time actually for uh, maybe moving into uh, a Q and A from the uh, audience. And I, I think that was a great point to end on. Like that, you had a lot to unpack there about just yeah, but the, what you have in the portfolio that's the kind of work you're going to get more of and, you know, really making work that you care about. It's going to bring more work to you that you yeah. also care about. So I think that was a great, sure. great uh, point for us to uh, transition toward the, yeah. uh, the Q and a here. And there's a lot of questions. Um, I'm going to just try to, I'm going to try to read them in order. Um, okay. Okay. So um, what was your first creative art job after teaching? So was that illustration or were you working in design or? Um, I was a, I was working in a frame shop, I guess, if that counts. I yeah, was working in sure. a gallery in Chicago and I was a professional framer for a long time. Uh, I think that, you know, that's, that's a creative job, right? So yeah. <laughs> um, how can you find opportunities for freelance work? Well, I, I think, uh, you answered some of that a little bit, but like for somebody, uh, a lot of our students, of course, are thinking about like, well, I'm, you know, when I graduate uh, or even before they graduate, how can they, how can they actively find opportunities for freelancing? Yeah, um, you know, I found gigs on Craigslist. Honestly, that's probably maybe not the best, <laughs> best advice, but um, that's one place I found stuff. Um, word of mouth was really what got me um, maybe some of my first like jobs, mm -hmm. you know, that weren't like giving me a ton of money, but were giving me opportunities to make stuff. Um, just friends of friends. Um, so, you know, you have, you know, like networking with people, I think is, is a really big, important thing. And it's, um, there's so many ways to do it now uh, online. Um, but other other ways to get freelance gigs, you know, I mean, I know a lot of art directors do find people on Instagram, on Etsy. There's um, like on Twitter, there's, um, they have certain nights where there's like, they're called like pitch nights. Um, and there's some for writers, some for illustrators. So it'll be like a, an art director or uh, editor goes on, you know, for like an hour and everybody just kind of like pitches stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that would be more so not like getting quick gigs though. That's like if you're yeah, trying to get, you know, like an agent or an editor or something to get your attention. But I think a lot of that is uh, you do have to put in that active work yourself to get your work in front of someone else's eyes, right? So it's just a matter of- Yeah, you uh, just gotta do it. Um, yeah. 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 And, I, and I was really hesitant to even share, to show my work for a long time. You know, even though I had studied education and art, um and like photography I was still just like very nervous about sharing because you're exposing a big part of yourself right it's not 
it's not everybody's cup of tea to go out there and tell and, and show everything but but at some point you you do have to um share your work with people to know that this is what you want to do and there's tons of different ways to do it now um online but i would also you know do find a critique group uh, is a big thing because once you start kind of creating a small little network word spreads and um honestly i i think people are just the best way to get um yeah that friends. sounds great um i think uh, one of the questions i think you kind of answered uh this was an early question you know was it hard to find projects that aligned with your values um, and you talked a little bit, uh, it seemed like you uh, very early on, uh, that was something important to you. So you kind of made an effort to well, you say that. I, mean, or no? I don't think it was important early on, honestly. Yeah. I, I was, I think that I, um, I think that I, after I made the Women's March poster and that was just a personal project, um, it said a lot, uh, a lot more to everybody else out there than I feel like it, it really did to me at the, at the moment. I was just like, pissed off and I wanted to make something, you know? And, um, but then uh, that I feel like was really the point in which other people saw maybe this voice that I had in, in terms of artwork. So I definitely did not have that from the start. Um, I had no idea what I wanted to say as an artist, you know, that's kind of why I, like, um, I didn't want to be like a, a gallery artist because I, I was just like, what am I going to make? Like, I have no idea what I'm going to make. Uh, I, I don't know what I, I want to say to the world. Yeah. Like, I don't feel like I have an experience. No, <laughs> so it's, it, it takes a long time. So, I, yeah, so uh, um, I think it's kind of like um, what put, if you do a project from passion, whether it was anger or whatever emotion, uh, I think the, the most genuine work we do, and sometimes we, it's something we think like no one else is even going to care about, that always ends up being yeah. the, the project that ends up like it's so shaping true. your life afterward, where it goes in this it's other so direction. True. It's so true. That really started um, getting the ball rolling for for those that kind of work to mm -hmm. to come in. So I'm looking at the chat here. So if you see me moving, it's just because uh, <laughs> I have a big screen that I'm navigating. Uh, as someone who's pursuing a career and education, how did you structure your own personal work and a teaching career? And I'm not sure if I. And then, uh, what kind of small creative jobs did you do? after teaching? I think some of this you covered in the slideshow because these yeah. are earlier questions. When I was teaching, I didn't make any work for myself. Um, I was like, you know, right out of college um, and it was all encompassing job to teach a uh, high school, I felt like. So I really didn't carve out any time for um, for work. And that was the reason once I got my little pink slip that I got laid off and I had like, freedom, you know, and I didn't have to feel guilty for not looking for a job because there was none. Um, I, that was the point when I said, all right, I'm going to like figure out what I can, you know, mm -hmm. come up with. And I, I, like, I just, I really wanted um, to see if I could do it or not to be successful as like a, as a real artist, um, because I had spent a year, you know, preaching to high school kids, you know, this is a real opportunity. This is a real career. Like, you know, consider this like a future for you guys. And then I kept thinking in the back of my mind, like, I never gave myself the chance to do that. Um, so once I did have the chance, that's when I started making um, stuff. Yeah. Um, and I, I think um, some of the questions are all related to that, like working a day job and tr trying to figure yeah. out where like, yeah, I mean, I did that for for years too. You know, I was I I worked full time jobs from there on out for like the next five years um, until I kind of quit my full time job when I you know and just felt at that point I I had to uh, give it my all. But I had been juggling both for a long time, and it just it was just slower. Um, it's not impossible, um, certainly not impossible to do both, but you just have to be really dedicated to it mm -hmm. and, and make sure that you you're continuing to work towards that goal like every day or at least every week. Um, uh, yeah. I totally agree. Um, another question I'm seeing is uh, the process of finding an agent or agents. Um, someone's wondering how long you've been working uh, with one and what are your takeaways from working with an agent versus not? And other people out there are several people that asked about agents and you, yeah. you mentioned a little bit about that. Sure. So I had um, 
with the project I showed you guys a little bit about the girl with the curly hair, Susan, um, the saga, like the five-year saga of trying to finish this project. Um, the reason it took so long was because we kind of kept getting different people interested in it accidentally. Um, so there was a digital publisher that, that approached us. We were just about to self-publish it and they saw the project on my Behance, honestly. And um, they were like, we have a new digital platform. We wanna, um, we wanna publish it via that. And then ooh, like a year later, they still hadn't published it. And um, we were getting really frustrated and just gonna do it by ourselves. So we developed it into this whole interactive app. And then at that moment, um, an agent came to us and said, listen, I can pitch this story to uh, children's book publishers and get this picked up like right away, no problems. So we put the brakes on doing it ourselves again, this is probably like year four, worked with this agent who couldn't sell it. Um, but that was another year we kind of waited. So that was, uh, you know, my takeaway from that agent was that um, at the end of that year, I asked her, I was like, how many people have you sent my portfolio to? And she was like, mm, like five. And I was like, oh my God. Right, okay. you can do that yourself, right? <laughs> I was like, I could have done way more than that myself, but, um, but you still have to be an advocate for yourself, even if you have an agent, but knowing um, and having a good, it's like a relationship, you know, like you have to have good communication and you're going to tell, you're going to know if something's off. So then um, I knew I needed to find another one. And uh, when I met the one that I currently have, um, love at first sight, I, I knew it was going to work, but it was still maybe six months of talking and seeing if we were really going to be able to work together. Um, if she, you know, wanted to actually take me on. Um, you know, I sent her a lot of book ideas because she's a literary agent. So um, it's maybe, a, it's, a, it's different than like an art rep, uh, which is focused on just kind of more getting um, art deals. She's way more in the book world. Um, so she really wanted to know that I was kind of in it for the long, for the long haul. So I just sent her lots of book ideas that I had, um, did some more examples of work for her from, from my own book ideas. Um, so it was like probably six months until I actually signed on with her. And since then, I mean, she's great. She's amazing. So I would absolutely recommend if you have a good agent, I think it can really change the game um, in terms of exposure, in terms of getting better money, better contracts, because there's a lot that goes into it. It's very time consuming to do all of the everything yourself. You know, it's, it's, it's enough to just do the artwork, but the business side of it too, while you still have to be very knowledgeable about it, um, you don't have to like read every single word. So, and she's just brilliant. You know, she's really good at telling me what to take, what to pass on, what's going to be worth my time, what's not going to be worth my time, um, has great insight into my own artwork. You know, like she's able to look at my stuff and, and tell things about myself and my work that like I wouldn't necessarily see. So it's, um, it's been a absolute pleasure working with her. So I would, I would recommend it. Not everybody wants one, but I think it's getting harder and harder to kind of not have one um, in certain, in certain markets. Yeah. Um, there's a, a couple of related questions. Um, one was, uh, what are your go-to steps to cure artist block? And then a related one is sort of, do you ever lose passion for a project while you're working on it? And what do you do? So you could maybe answer one or either of those. I, well, I have two dogs. So First thing, I'll take them for a walk if I have, if I've just realized I've been staring at my screen for like 20 minutes without thinking of anything. Um, or I'll take a shower or I'll go for a walk, a hike, uh, I'll work out, um, go for a bike ride, just anything to not think about it, honestly. Um, I feel like, you know, in, in, in my process, like my early stage of coming up with like a concept for something, um, I got this from Don Draper on Mad Men, but you like thinking about something really intensely for a, a time period, you know, just like at your desk, working through it and then stepping away and going and doing something. And then you're kind of struck with a, with like some, some good ideas, but you kind of have to stop thinking about it. So I feel like I'm better now at knowing when I'm just not being, uh, you know, efficient with my time and, and I'm fine taking long breaks. I'm fine taking a day off. I'm fine going to the museum or just like, you know, going to concerts, like living my life because I think that that all of that stuff, well, I guess not in this pandemic world, but um, someday we'll be able to do things again, but even just, um, I don't know, watching a movie, doing something different, you know, to get your head out of your, um, your block. Um, 
I forgot what the second half oh, of that Well, the other was. one was sort of like, if you've lost your passion for a project uh, oh. in the middle of it, and what do you do to, you know, kind of force yourself to either for, uh, force yourself to finish it, or I guess it's uh, um, related to the first one a little bit, but. Yeah, I mean, books are very long, and I've realized that I love the first three quarters of them, and the last quarter can be very painstakingly long, um, but it's kind of the most critical point because you can kind of bring all of your stuff up to like, you know, 80% and then even 90%, and if you just stick with it and take that, you know, extra extra pass at the piece, you know, give it another day, you can really improve stuff. And, and I, I've now looked back into stuff, into stuff where I, I remember just being like, I'm over it, you know, I'm done, I'm done, I'm putting it aside. And then, and looking back now and being like, if I would have just spent like six more hours on that, it would have been amazing, you know? So for sure, I get very, you know, over things, but um, you also do get paid at the end of it. So you yeah, have to finish. That's a good motivator. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, I mean, there's so many questions. I'll try to get to as many as I can. Um, you said you were a teacher before and someone asked what that was like, but um, maybe more specifically, were there ever times when teaching affected your art process? So uh, oh. and that is actually a question I thought about too. Like, do you, do you still think you're teaching in a way by making art? Maybe that's another way to put. Oh, for sure. And I think that's a big part that drew me to books, um, to children's books, like just as a teacher, my mom was a teacher, she was a bilingual teacher. So she um, like made a big conscious effort to find every book out there that was in Spanish and English. And I feel like I subconsciously, um, you know, maybe thought that that, that like, um, well, I guess, you know, so I had an appreciation for them early on, even though maybe I didn't realize it until like later. Um, but I also, uh, from a teaching perspective, loved feeling like I was still, um, yeah, you are still teaching with these, you know, and I do a lot of school visits, which are super fun, because you're just like a rock star to a second grader. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they're really, um, can be transformative things for kids, you know, if, if they find the right book, um, if they, if you see yourself in a book, if you just like land in the right world, it can be, it can be a game changer for a lot of kids. Um, so, you know, my, myself included for sure. So I definitely feel like I'm still teaching in a way, it, it, but I love that I can actually still go back into schools and, yeah. and have that interaction with kids. Yeah. It's always a great feeling, uh, knowing that you have that much, uh, kind of an impact on somebody that they really love, like, love it, right? That when they see, like, like it, it humanizes yeah. the whole endeavor, I think. Um, yeah, the, yeah, when uh, they see, like, artwork, like, real artwork in person, oh, my God, they're like, wait, what? <laughs> there were some questions on uh, the digital aspect and what you favor, but I think you kind of covered that, that you sort of, uh, you go back and forth and uh, through, it's very fluid in your process uh, between digital and traditional. Another question I'm seeing is uh, any advice in developing uh, your own style or our own style if we don't have one? Uh, so I think a lot of students really worry about that. Like, I don't have a style or I need to have a style. So I don't know if you have any general yeah. advice in developing your own. You talked a little bit about that earlier as well. Yeah, um, I mean, that's like the number one question, right? Like, how? I, I think, um, I guess, I think it's, I think it, like, even though you've probably heard this many times, I think it does take time. It is like, it is a journey to finding that. Um, but that said, I feel like you could speed up the journey in, in ways um, in terms of picking out really specific things that you love about other people's styles. Like, what is it really that you like? Um, you know, I think that most people start out in, in stuff like this because we have, you know, somewhat really good tastes in artwork and illustration in in movies animations whatever but it's a matter of moving that from from being able to see what is good what is quality to being able to create that um so i i feel like when i was really working on style i i picked one thing that i kind of mentioned which was people um and how to make those people look 
how I wanted my world to look, you know, how I wanted my characters to look. And the rest kind of fell into place after that, um, I, I feel like, and, and the rest can kind of change. And, and maybe it's not people for everybody, but, um, but that was kind of how I went about trying to find my style. Um, so I did hundreds and hundreds of, you know, copying different people that I liked and really thinking like, what is it about this book that I just love or this illustrator that I just love? Um, and I feel like I kept coming back to the same people and, and kind of just trying to dissect that and adding those bits and bits and pieces into my work. Um, but I think style too is just something that like, as you're, as you, as like, maybe I felt like, uh, I don't know how to say it. It's, it's so hard. Cause I feel like it just grew project after project. Um, so you just have to do it a lot, you know, to kind of, uh, you know, start from here and get closer and closer and closer to what you feel like is, um, you know, you can look at and you're like, yes, that's mine. Um, I think that programs like this are really awesome. I, I, I kind of feel like I've seen a lot of, um, you know, maybe I, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I've known some people that can finish a program that's like strictly animation or something and feel like their style has to be that. Um, maybe because that's what they've, maybe that it's like too specific. I, I would suggest just, <coughs> oh, sorry, that's my dog. Um, that, you know, uh, I don't know what I was saying, but. Um, well, no, I, I, I see like. I think programs you think that, that uh, let you you know, let you explore, let you explore different markets, different mediums. Um, that's just the way you're going to find it. That, that sounds good to me. Yeah, I think it's a, it happens kind of organically, you know. Uh, I don't know, there's a, there's a point where you realize like, this is just the way I do it. And I yeah. think part of it is like just self acceptance, like, okay, I guess that's my style, because I can't do it any other yeah. way. Yeah, and I, I've heard this kind of uh, also that I love that, um, you know, our mistakes or that our inefficiencies, you know, the things I don't know in Photoshop that you know, you know, all of the things that that take me a lot longer are going to produce a different result, you know, so in, in a way, just, um, you know, I'm naturally going to make things different than you are, because like, what we know is different, what we're bringing to the table is different, even we're, if we're using the same mediums, the same materials. Um, sometimes our, our like mistakes or our quirks or, you know, our weird little things about uh, our artwork are, are what make it your style. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, uh, well, I got a note here, a lot of love for your dog. So I guess a lot of people have uh, commented on that. Um, and have an, uh, maybe this, this could be our last question because we're running out of time, but do you have any tips on pitching a children's book idea when you're definitely not a writer? I, I think DEF means definitely. I don't know texting talk that the young people use. But, it's, a, uh, it's a wordless book. That's a great idea. So, yeah. <laughs> so how would you go about, uh, so let's say, I think a lot of people want to know like, well, how, uh, like, how much drawing do I have to do to pitch a book? Like, what do I have to do? Um, I mean, I always suggest okay. doing a thumbnail of the whole thing and maybe a few finished pieces, but I think publishers have different um, requirements. So I don't know if you have any tips or advice for our students. Yeah, I mean, I'd probably say the same, you know, having, um, you know, everything, like sketches of everything and then maybe a couple examples of the final of the final art. Um, in terms of words, you know, that's, to be honest, that's the part that I'm struggling with too in, in terms of making my own writing and illustrating my, my books. And I think that um, when you're really, when, when you're really leaning towards one side or the other, go with that, you know, start with your, with your, um, with your artwork, with your sketches, tell your story through your artwork. Um, words can, my agent keeps telling me the words are the last thing that you add, you know, they can be changed, they can be edited. Um, editors are probably going to have suggestions for the whole thing anyways. So um, I think if someone can really get a good idea of what you're trying to say with the with the sketches, mm -hmm. then that should be enough to um, to pitch the book. Um, I mean, that said, if you don't want it to be a wordless book, I would suggest writing a manuscript with it. Um, but keeping it minimal, keeping it, you know, under a thousand words, not trying to get too wordy, like just really focus on what you're good at, which is the drawing um, side of it. Um, there's lots of people out there looking for, for books. So, um, you know, the, there's, I feel like a lot of opportunity right now. 
So don't let maybe fear of not of feeling like you're not the best writer out there, like stop you. I think that's, that's great advice. Um, I, th I think I've gone through most of the questions in the chat. Um, uh, unless somebody has one, we have a, we're at about five minutes left. So um, I don't know, I think that was great. Uh, yeah, I'll say too that um, I'm on the um, committee for a, um, Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators. Uh, it's a mouthful, but the diversity and or the equity and inclusion committee, right? And we have a lot of um, scholarships. So there's um, a brand new one that actually just came out today that's for the for a conference, for the winter conference for SCBWI. Um, any writer or illustrator can apply for it. So if you identify as, you know, like um, BIPOC, like Black Indigenous people of color, um, and you're in Illinois, which I'm assuming you guys all are, um, apply for that. You know, attend a conference, it's virtual, can't hurt. Um, you get to share your portfolio with a ton of industry professionals. Um, they probably do like um, manuscript critiques, um, this or that or the other thing. Um, and then we have another one and I'll make sure to send the links to you guys so that you can share them with all the classes. But we yeah. have, you know, one in January that's also just for a membership for SWI. And there's tons of ways to just connect with people, um, uh, share your, you know, illustrations in the gallery. Um, tons of different little events throughout Chicago. Oh, I guess they're all virtual right now. So, I mean, it's a great opportunity to be able to kind of dip into this Zoom or that Zoom and just like learn things that, um, that you know, if, if the children's book route is kind of what you're pursuing. But I will say one last thing, even if you're not considering books as like part of your, you know, vision for what you are gonna be as an artist, I would still just leave it in the back of your mind um, for a few reasons. I think that, you know, in terms of being a freelance uh, person, it's really nice to have a variety of projects, long projects, short projects. Um, you know, books take a really long time. There's a lot of downtime in them uh, in which you can do whatever other projects that you want to. And it's really nice to know that you're having money coming in three months and then in six months and then sometime next year. Um, it feels like a really stable way to be a freelance, art a freelance artist. Um, and honestly, in today's crazy world, like it feels more stable than a lot of stable jobs, you know, because I, I do know going out for the next couple of years, I at least can feed myself, you know, and hopefully more, but you know, it, it's kind of to me become like books have kind of become like a base salary. And then I really look to other shorter projects to like beef that up. But, um, you know, don't do it just for the money, obviously. But um, I think people maybe, write it off if they're more interested in editorial or this or that or the other thing but I think you'd be, be surprised with the like amount of freedom you get the amount of creativity that goes into it um so yeah just leave it in the back of your head if you're not already like interested yeah I always say um why why uh, just completely dismiss something you don't know what opportunities will come your way sometimes uh something you do something you never thought you would even like it and it ends up being something you do like and I also like what you said about there is downtime. Book projects are long. Sometimes you're waiting for the editor to get back to you or, or somebody and that can take some time. And it's always good to stay busy as opposed to just pacing and waiting. Like, why don't they yeah. get back to me? I need to know, <laughs> right? So I yeah. think that's uh, great advice for everyone. Um, we're at 728 and a half or something like that. So I think maybe we'll <laughs> wrap it up. Uh, right. Thank you so much. It was uh, great to talk to you. I think you have a lot of great stuff for all of us to think about, and especially the students that were here today. Um, I don't just thank you. It was yeah. wonderful. Well, I hope we can have you back. Me too. Had a great and, uh, time. And I think now we're supposed to stay still for a minute while we wrap this up. And thank you everyone for coming. I'm sorry, I broke my own rule. <laughs> thank you everyone that was here tonight.